Sand King is the pickup for support, secondary support. I like it a lot because uh, you can, of course, burrow strike, which kind of disrupts everybody. If there's going to be a shackle on someone, Five then Sha remaining. Sand King can get in fast and get his uh, his game going. And yeah, he's a, he's a real playmaker and, and they kind of need something to get in there, an initiator uh, that is less susceptible to getting instantly shackled than the storm. And you kind of don't want to shackle the Sand King because there's already a Storm Spirit that you want to use it on or a Slark. So uh, yeah, I like the pick up a lot. We do have 4FC thinking about their last pick. They need a core hero. Now, there are still so many in there and I was not going to say Alone Druid. I am honest about that kind of stuff. I was actually going to say something like a Luna who was still in the pool, I believe, as well. But it is a Lone Druid that they pick up. And yes, it is a really typical hero, but this does mean that it is... A lone Druid probably on the safe lane. But Timbersaw played... Yeah, Timbersaw by Strangby? Is it interesting? I have to say, it's an interesting draft from them. I really was not expecting something like that. As we do have a tell or we have a disconnect coming out for, uh, for Relax, but hopefully they'll fix that shortly. Uh, but yes, again, welcome to the Art White Festival. This is the Winner's Bracket semi-finals. And uh, we are watching Relax, you are doing fine. And they are one game up compared to their opponents Ten in this best of three minutes. series. It is four friends plus Krilly, and they are the ones to try and force out a third game. Of course, I just said it, winner's bracket. That does mean that neither team is going home after this match, but the loser will make it to the loser bracket rather than uh, to the winner's bracket. And the loser bracket is best of one, so you do want to make it to the winner's bracket where you just have more chances, less games played, and where is... The storm, like, I see... Is he gonna come from the floor? Look at that. What's happened to him? He's hiding in the floor. It's funny. Actually. He's so, he's so happy all the time. It's so frustrating. Look at his face. Imagine if you would have to look at that the whole day. Wouldn't you just get, like, want to punch him in the face? I would want to punch him in the face. It's too happy. There we go. You would want to punch that in the face too, but for different reasons. Hmm. Hmm. Is there someone who looks normal? Uh. Yeah! Like the bear. Bear is funny. His mouth open though. Lone Druid looks kind of nonchalant too. No. Punch. Oh, she looks pretty. Yeah, she's pretty. Okay. So we have a pause because we're lacking one of, uh, of Relax, but it gives us time to um, select a hard skin. Boom. There we go. But yeah, let's take a look at who's playing what. For 4FC we can already check that completely. Actually, we can do that for Relax as well. But 4FC, they've got Slumbum playing the um, Shadow Shaman this game. Uh, no Legs Cow will play the Templar Assassin. We'll go mid with that one. Strangby. The normally the carry player will play the Timbersock, really. It is their Lone Druid player, will play the Lone Druid. It's his signature hero. It is an amazing hero for him. The only thing he needs is time, and we're going to see if uh, if his supports or his, or his team is going to be able to give that to him. Juicy will play the Venomancer for this game, and that is everybody on the side of 4FC. For Relax, we're having Dread playing the Sand King. I'm expecting some big plays from him. We have Yoki on the Slark. Shashlo playing... or Shashlo... Shashlo, Jesus. Sorry, people. I do kind of mess up his name often, but I, I try. He's playing the Clockwork offline, of course, as we always see him do. Tama Wild, of course, on the Storm Spirit. And that will mean that the Crystal Maiden goes the way of Dance and Trance, as that is the last support for Relax. I do like the Crystal Maiden Sand King combination as well. Crystal Maiden, of course, with their aura, making sure that there is some extra mana going the way of the Sand King. And that even, like, normally already with, uh, with the buff to Blink Dagger and all that, uh, Sand King doesn't necessarily need mana boots before going for a blink dagger. And that's a trend that we've been seeing more and more. And with the Crystal Main Aura, that even that, that goes more so. Because there's going to be even extra mana for Dread to spend with that aura there. So I, I, I like that a lot. And I think the combination is, is pretty strong as well. And especially also early game. Because overall, you'd say in the early game, Sand King is not that strong. Because his burrow strike range is super, du super duper short. But Crystal Main can either Frostbite target, so the Dread can walk up to it and Burrow Strike from that. Or, we're gonna see a Slow coming out, and that Slow might be helping Dread to get in range as well for the Burrow Strike, so... 
Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see if they can make it active, though, as Dance and Trance did reconnect. Pick up his hero, so we are going to have ourselves a go very soon. A lot of pings coming out. I don't expect it to be an aggressive trial lane. I think they don't need to. However, they might just want to try and slow, slow down the uh, Lone Druid. And if the Lone Druid is on the bottom lane, I like it, I would even say that it's worth losing a bit of farm for on the Slark. Lone Druid is going to be their real threat later on. And I think Storm should be able to at least level against the A. Might not be having the easiest of times, but I think they would be okay. We'll see though. There's already a smoke picked up by the Venomancer, so we might see some act active uh, roaming coming out from Juicy and Slumbum. Looks like there is going to be a Lone Druid on the safe lane, and we are going to see Timbersaw off lane, so yeah, it is going to be as expected then. For Relax, they're not going to try to stop that Lone Druid, they're going to go top with their tri lane and uh, boof the clockwork against the Lone Druid, which is actually, until level 5, it's a fairly decent lane for Shaklo to be in, and he might be able to, to harass the clockwork or the Lone Druid a bit, but once the Lone Druid has Entangle, then things start to get very scary, because Shaklo could actually die from that. Now, on the upside, before that, he might actually be able to kill the bear off. Might get 300 gold for that if he gets the cog in, but we'll see if he's gonna try. We'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Hey. I did not notice this yet, but there's a bit of snow here on the floor. There's even a snowy log here. Look at that. Oh! Well. I guess there's snow everywhere. Wow. Am I only just now noticing this now? That's so stupid. There's more snow on Dire than there is on Radiant. Hmm. Well, the looks like we might have a tri lane top, depending on where these two are going. Both of them are having a smoke and like... You know, typical... If, if I would talk about Shadow Shaman as a support, I would actually say that he needs levels. And he is not the strongest early game support. Needs a couple of levels before he can actually start making things happen. And so seeing this, as aggressive as they are, is kind of surprising to me. And they're, they're actually going to go for this. I mean, yes, they are up against a storm, and, and we know that storm does not have an escape. If Tim Wild comes for... Oh, they're going to go for this. Their hex is there. Is there more? There's going to be a gale as well. It hits barely on the edge. There's no new refraction, though, and this might actually be turning around real fast. It has to be very careful. Very careful now, Timo Wild though, he runs, he lives, and does he live? Or does he not live? Dread comes in, not needed anymore, but that's the first gank attempt wasted because they were impatient. Timo Wild, he actually was planning on moving, or I'm going to assume that he was planning on moving a bit closer to the river before they went in, but yeah, very good movement from him. A bit impatient coming out from 4 of C. I like the idea though, I like the aggression, as we are going to see Timo Wild still getting chased down, but he picks up a, a regen rune. So now all of a sudden it is Templar Assassin that is the one that has to be careful, but so far so good, I'd say. As the supports are back on the bottom lane, trying to harass uh, Shaklo. I don't think that he knows that they are here, though. Uh, now he does. Hello. And that's going to be a Gale hitting if he wants to, but he's just going to harass him out. There is no Poison Sting yet on this Venomancer, so he's just right-click harass, taking a look at the top lane. We will have Yoki harassing this... Timber saw quite a lot as well. Didn't go for the pounce, even though I think he could have. Nice arrest coming out from Strengby as well. He has got the bigger wave here, so he will be pushing out the lane. He knows that too, so he might as well do as much damage as he can before the lane disappears from sight. Illusion room for Saklo. Shaklo. It was a very risky undertaking to check out where the first blood is gonna happen? Because there are so many possibilities here. Like, I feel like the support duo on the side of 4 of C is not done yet. I mean, they tried once, but they still have another smoke in their pockets. And otherwise, they can at least try it on the clockwork. Timber Saw is playing fairly aggressive. Now gets Frostbitten as well. There might be a Burst Strike coming off, but the Timber Chain is there first. 
But yeah, he is level 3 right now, so he's maybe a bit less uh, susceptible to dying, actually, but still not easy. As we have no legs, cow in some trouble here as well. No mana for refraction, does have the stick charges to get himself back up to the right amount of mana, though, but not doing as well as you would hope from him, as he is 7 to 2 compared to 14 to 3 for the Storm Spirit. But there is a smoked up support combination again and I like that they pulled the wave first making sure that it looks like there are supports actually pulling a stacking but let's see if uh, if that is gonna be uh, Tamer Wild careful or not he is gonna be the target they're gonna come in from the tower side though and that means that they are gonna be scouted out early the tower does tick off the smoke Denied. Patience is a virtue. Waiting for the proper positioning. They reveal themselves though and tame him out. All he has to do is just walk that way. Just walk that way and he's fine. That's all he needs to do, really. It's a bad smoke. Coming from this side might have been better. They would have had more time to go in for the gale. They do force him out of experience range, I guess. They force him out of the lane, but a rotation like that should be resulting into a kill. This is the second smoke they use and all they get out of it is just... Pushing, like the first smoke, they didn't even push someone out of the lane. No, this is just pushing Storm out of, the, out of the lane for the first time and he barely misses anything. Temple Assassin does get some extra last hits, but it doesn't really matter at all. Oh, it's a bit of a bad smoke. And that smoke position, regardless, if you're, if you're Radiant and you're gonna smoke the dire mid lane, you're, you should always come from this side, I think that is kind of known. Unless you know that your solo mid is strong enough to force your enemy core hero to there, and you come from this side. Then it is a good position to be in. But otherwise, no. Denied. And that's, uh, that's the reason right there. Krilly, sitting on 25 to 16. And he has got entangled on his bear, and we do see Jacques Clo being a lot... A lot more scared. He's got six last hits. He's leveling, sure, but that's all. That's all he can say right now. If he comes close and he gets entangled, he'll die. He knows that too. At the same time, Timbersaw is having a bit of a better time than the Clockwork has because Timbersaw is level 5 right now. Not died yet either. Is up against, of course, uh, also dual lane. Pounds hits though. Can still Timber chain himself away. He's gone. There he goes. As the bear chases down the Clockwork here. Bear also with a uh, Orb of Venom on him, so more harassment coming out as it looks like Dread might be able to make a play here. He is, of course, covered by the uh, darkness of the night as it is nighttime. And he is uh, maybe helped out. No, Crystal Maiden is backing off. Just place an observer. Just in case our supports come back and reveal themselves. It could be. Oh, Burrow Strike. He is level 2 only, though. And you need to be level 3 to get those uh, that range on that Burrow Strike. Right now, you can almost count it as a melee spell, as you can see. And he actually went for level 2 in the star Sandstorm, which is interesting, because that's not normally something that you see. Burrow Strikes are the ones that you want. He's really relying on Vortexes and Frostbites to set him up for nice the Burrow Strike, try. then. So maybe a Harass is all he wanted. We have got a Clockwork coming in. He might not be level 6, but he does have level 3 in Battery Assault, which will be taking off the Refraction real fast on the Templar Assassin, should he get him cogged in, of course. Haste room picked up by the storm. Pretty scary as he's also level 6. Could be turning that into a first blood, I think. Especially with these supports so low level. I mean, they had two rotations, both failed. Shadow Shaman level 2, Venomancer level 3. Compare that to the Crystal Main who's level 4 and the Sand King who's now level 4 as well. So that's a big difference, a painful difference as well. And I mentioned earlier, like, if I was going to say something about Shadow Shaman, it's that he's level dependent. And so having him... This sad unexperience is a sad thing to see. Very sad thing to see indeed. No first blood on the board, by the way. We are almost seven minutes into the game. And both of these teams are happy the way that it is. Well, maybe if we have seen not that much, they slowed down Tamer Wild, but with him level six, like that is why you try to shut him down before that happens, right? There is a reason for that. But no. No can do. Spirit Bear entangles and creeps. Hannah Midas picked up by Krilly. He's in for the long haul. Another smoke for 4 FC. Well, at this point, it is almost kind of desperate. It is almost just very, very scary. 
That's what it is. Because if they smoke the supports, which they're probably going to try to do again, there is, um, and he is actually placing a ward. They saw it though. But if, they, if they're trying again with supports, there is a pretty decent chance that Relax is in time with rotations and they actually get kills and return at that point. Venomancer is trying to get some experience here in the jungle by slowly, very slowly taking down a jungle stack. Not pulling or stacking though, he's letting Krilly push the tower out because at this point Krilly, I mean he is a, like a lone druid overall, is a decent farmer. But at some point his, the most part of his gold comes from taking down towers. So that's why I see Morty laying down so f much pressure here on this bottom lane. And in the meantime, the Clockwork did make it to level 6, so he has got his hook shot. Now what I like to see from him right now is that he rotates, and he actually gets something going. Maybe we're gonna have something going here, though, with the teleport coming in. Crystal Man goes for the bear, however. Still 300 gold if they take it, but it doesn't look like they do at all. And the bear actually gets uh, given a south. They do deny the tower. Nonetheless, some extra gold. Maybe is enough. Oh, refraction here in the mid lane coming out just in time to keep No Legs Cow up. Timo out, not getting the first blood on his hands. Though he really wanted to have it. Really wanted to have it. Can't get it though. Crystal main, level 5. She's got another smoke. Or got her own smoke, I should say, because she didn't have a smoke before. And this is why we saw him leveling the sandstorm. Getting some farm in the jungle by himself. He is only 600 gold away from having his own blink dagger already. Hook shot in, catches out the <laughs> Shadow Shaman, who did go for a hex, but it doesn't matter. The first lot is there. Clockwork takes it home. And now zip in. Venomans are level 3. You're no match for Tema Wild, who is level 8. Right now, this is a very dead Venomancer. Lone Druid, why are you here? It's three versus one. You can't chase that. He knows that now too. Backs off as the rest of Relax back themselves up. It's three kills across the board because Slark got a solo kill here on the top lane against a Timber Saw while that all was happening. So very, very strong now for Relax. At ten minutes into the game, they lead the charts. They are the ones to do best of all. Lone Druid can still turn into be a very big nuisance in this game, but for now, they hold the reins. And they are the ones that determine how, where, one, when, what happens. But that will only... Uh, well, I think they're gonna pause for a bit in terms of aggression and, and continue again once that Sand King has his Blink Dagger. He's so close. You d like, as a Sand King, you don't want to have the risk of giving stuff away. He is actually smoked up, so they're going to try to take down the Timber Saw again, this time with help of supports. The Shadow Dance is there again as well, so why not? If the Pounce hits, he's dead. First, though, the Burrow Strike. The Slow is already there. The Burrow Strike still hits as well. There will be a Frostbite Epicenter, and he will drop for the second time this game. Dread, in the end, with the last hit, it is 0-4 in favor of Relax. And their supports... One smoke rotation, making it happen. We have Lone Druid in a lot of trouble on the bottom lane. We'll get picked off. Storm Spirit with the haste rune, making sure that it happens. Gets help from the Clockwork Hookshot, of course, as well. And that is something they cannot afford to have happen. Lone Druid needs Radiance to farm. Tower, needs to get his Radiance up. Needs, Dines like, he is, he is the guy to carry this game Radiance on his shoulders. And if he then dies, the, he, they cannot afford that. Templar Assassin, of course, also here. That could have the game on, the, on the, her shoulders, but... She is really not that strong yet. She actually, she, like, she lost mid, might not have died, but top the experience attack. gain for her is less than what Tima Wild got. The last hits, the farm is less than what Tima Wild got. And she's just not ready yet to, to step out to the real world to try and make things happen. I mean, it's a very scary world out, out there. You've got a Sand King that now has a Blink Dagger. You've Radiance got a Crystal Maiden that can frostbite you and you're visible and you're... You can't really uh, go anywhere. Oh, whoo, perfect frostbite. The burst strike will finish it off right here. That frostbite was so incredibly on point. As you can, of course, get yourself out of a frostbite with a timber chain. But you can get frost. But if you get frostbitten inside or while timber chaining, then that's not going to have no battery assault coming out. The cogs as well, perfectly orchestrated by Shaklo. And he will get that Shadow Shaman death kill thing. Yes. That's a good kill for him. He has to be careful though. He's gonna try to teleport himself out. Let's see if it first hit and tangle. Yes! First hit and tangle! It hits! And that should be enough to get the kill going. There we go. Cruelly really happy with getting that one. He really needed that as well. Very nicely done for him.
well, yeah, in, in like you can't like I'm not sure how far you can actually say very nicely done if you're just getting a one hit and tangle, you know, it's 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 all it's always a lot. So I don't know. Anyways, we have Shadow Blade now up for the Slark as well. He is now ready to go in. Talking about going in. Tame a wild. Things that he can get take down uh, Strangby, but he gets shackled, he gets hexed. He'll go down instead. Now in comes the cavalry, cavalry though. It is indeed uh, the Slark who actually runs himself away. Doesn't think he can take down the Timber Saw and leaps himself over the trees to get himself towards his courier because the Shadow Blade was not in his inventory yet until the courier got to him. So couldn't do anything before that. And that, those were the first two kills that 4FC got. So that the Clockwork bottom lane and now also the Storm Spirit on the uh, top lane. And those two kills are actually very important. They're not even on supports. They're just on, on solo lanes. Now, granted, the Slark is probably the more important one right now, but, you know, oh, this bear, you're so dead. That's 300 gold going the way of Relax, and let's see who gets it. It's it's Shaklo, that's good for him. 1300 gold for him. In the meantime, mid lane, Refraction is now off. There's more slows. Tama Wild going for it. Nice melt coming out, but it's still going to be forcing... Ooh, it's fine. Sentry Ward upon Sentry here. It's kind of weird, but... Timbersa went down the bottom uh, on the top lane, by the way. As uh, that was the solo kill for Slark, putting a Shadow Blade into action. I mean, it can show every death that Timbersaw has, but Timbersaw ju will just keep dying if he doesn't have help. As he did die so far four times. Top tower is he is half of the kills that Relax has right now. That's a bit scary. Orchid being built up by this uh, Storm Spirit. He needs one step closer to it with killing off this uh, Shadow Shaman. Well, actually, that was a uh, kill steal, <laughs> if I've ever seen any. The Nova from the Crystal Main maxed out, granted, does do a lot of damage, but gets the kill there. So Crystal Main smokes up together with the Sand King. Let's see where they can go. Let's see who they can find. Lone Druid seems to be their goal here on the drooling female bear that you can see here. It does look female, doesn't he? I've got pretty eyelashes and stuff, yeah. But not very charming, as he is drooling. Venomance already dead, but we're following Krilly's attempt of dying, well, attempt of staying alive. Let's call it that one. We have teleports coming in. They want to try and help him out. Look for the entangles. Can they find them? Not just yet. No entangles. In comes the epicenter and the burst strike. Dread already take down the Shadow Shaman, and that's going to be Templar Assassin dead as well with one more hit mount. Will live. Yoki can get him. Gets a kill indeed. Strangby in the meantime getting a double kill as well, though barely making it out alive. And never mind, doesn't make it out alive. Tamar Wild, he's gonna be able to run. He has a gale on him. But it's uh, not enough to take him down. It's a complete team wipe as we saw the Venomancer die. It's the last one there. Yes, Sand King died. Yes, Clockwork died. But everybody on the side of 4FC died as well as Relax was prepared for that fight. They were all there as well. Very nicely done, and I mean, I guess if you're relaxed, you know that the enemy team will protect your lone druid. So they were ready for that. Burrow Strike Epicenter coming in from Dread, doing a lot of work, and of course the Sandstorm, making sure that Templar Assassin's Refraction doesn't do shit because it gets ticked off almost immediately. This Templar Assassin is having a very rough game. Yoki now with the Shadow Blade going mid. Let's see where he's going. Knows that there is a tower there. Has to be on the ed ed edges. The outskirts. In comes the hookshot though. And the pounce up on the Veno. Still the gale lands on two. But it's the Veno that dies. Shadow Demon following straight after. And I mean that is 4 to 17. Meantime top lane. Looks like a Dread. Burrow strikes. Now he's not going to be able to get the kill. But he can get out. I mean this is support Sand King versus an offlane Timbersaw and he can't get the kill, as in Timbersaw cannot get the kill. Templar Assassin. Making sure that this bottom lane is not a safe place for a Radiant team as Krilly can't really afford to die anymore. They need his they need his Radiance now rather than later, and he is still very far off. Like he's only sitting on thirty one hundred gold. Let's see if we can get some entangles. I guess that's also a thing from the previous fight. Where there was no Entangle coming off out from the clockwork straight away, and if that would have happened, like the luck factor in the bear is is so big. Oh, top lane Timber saw, he's invisible for the moment, but he is surrounded by two. He finds dread. Perhaps they can pick him off. They have got the shadow shaman around there as well. He's baiting things out. He's level six now. Sentward goes down. He hexes him up. They're gonna go for this. Let's see if they can. Uh, either shock burrow strike away. There's blink in one second, and he's just fine. I, like, he's really fine, and who might not be fine is someone else, as there's a Shadowblade Slark looking for a target. There's a Sentry Ward around there, though, and they do see him. 
he realized that as he did have the shadow dance stick off. Meantime, bottom lane, Templar Assassin chasing down Shackle, but he forced staff to the low ground. His first big item ready. Let's take a look at if we have some other items up on heroes that we hadn't seen yet. We've already seen what Slark has, but we don't know yet what he's going to build with that 3600 gold that he has in his inventory. He is pretty damn rich. Is he going to go straight for a, for a Scotty? Which is, of course, a very good item on Slark. I actually wouldn't put it past him. I think, like, he's ahead. I would find it a very legit option at the moment. Storm Spirit, he's got his Orchid complete right now, so he'll be having that to silence up anybody. Which is actually, it's strong against basically everybody that he comes across. Nobody can run from him anymore. So we have the Sand King going for a Veil of Discord by the looks of it. I think uh, Vickermont would approve. Oh, zip in, zip out. Careful there. They look for entangles. They've got themselves the sand, uh, the slark as well, as the clockwork who's ready for a hook shot. They know he's there though, but doesn't really matter. Burrow strike coming out. Dread already gets one kill before he gets help. There it is. Dread might still actually get picked up, but the sh the, s the venomancer and shadow shaman both go down. Yoki goes for the shadow dance. Invisible goes for the dark pact as well. Maybe they can get templar assassin. No, he is the one that got picked up. That's an unstoppable streak going the way of the Timber Saw. In the meantime, the fight's not over just yet. Curly is chasing down Timber Wild, who still has plenty of mana to zip himself away, though. So he should be fine. He should be okay. Now he's out of mana. Is there an entangle coming for him? There is! There is! This might actually be a kill. In comes the Dance and Trance Crystal Maiden, though, as the bear will still get Timber Wild. And maybe the Crystal Maiden is now in trouble as, as well. Gets entangled. Chakalo Hukali who shot into the bear to try and escape, but in the end, he'll just find death as well. And that turns into, if he dies, which I think he will, turns into a 5 for 0. The Timber Chain, it is enough. Triple kill for Krilly, and this might be the big turnaround 4FC was waiting for their entire game. But Dread coming in, looking for another Burrow Strike. Krilly in some trouble, 40 health. The blink is not going to be there for another 5 seconds, so Krilly will make it out alive. He has got the Radiance ready. The, the Relic is in the bear, the recipe is in his stash. He is sitting still right next to a ward, so he knows that he still has to run for his life, but it's it's good. This fight was good. 4FC, completely back in the game with this fight. And that, that came down to, I'd say, just like, I'd say a bit too much YOLO coming out from Relax. They, they're like, they forced them back, to, like, wow, this tower is in the night range and they don't deny it. Well, this is a free tower for Lex, but they forced 4FC back in between their tier 1 and tier 2. And then in comes Dread from the side, who, yes, Burrow strikes people, but he still ended up going down before the fight even starts. Clockwork was on the other side of the fight, picks up a support, great. But then you have Clockwork on the wrong side of the fight, or using all his spells on a Shadow Shaman support. Dread giving his life for Venomance support, and then in comes Lone Druid. And in comes the entangles, and uh, that is going to be people diving on their tier one towers, and they just they just threw their lives away. Good fight for four of C though, and well, not so good positioning for the shadow shaman who is going to get picked up. He's trying to do what he can, but nonetheless, the bear is there. Perhaps he can avenge that. The burn is there as well. The venomants are still got picked up by the slark in the shadow dance. But this might be actually relaxed diving in again. Tama Wild, he is actually going to jump in. And get picked up, just like that. Very easy, very worth a trade as well, as the bear still hasn't been able to find more. Hasn't been able to entangle more. Hasn't been able to burn people more, but I think that is still going to be happening. Yoki comes back in as well. Really has to be careful. He actually gets picked up, and now all of a sudden, this could be turning bad for 4FC. As without Lone Druid, they are kind of not in fighting state. Lone Druid is their entire fighting state. No legs cow puts up the refraction. For the moment, it's going to help him out. The Gale whiffs. Can they force them at least back? A three versus three here. Never mind. Three versus four. Dread comes in with an epicenter, able to help take down a Shadow Shaman and the Venomancer. And there goes the Templar Assassin as well. Double kill for Yoki. Is Dance and Trance will go down from the poison. Should go down from the poison. Doesn't go down. From the goes down from the poison. There we go. <laughs> that was expected. But four people dead. On a side of four of C. Better yet, Shadow Shaman died twice in the same fight, and I think the Venomancer as well. As yeah, they died twice in the same fight. And, I mean, Timbersaw didn't die. Big whoop. Lone Druid died. That's the most important thing there is for 4FC. It's the third time that Lone Druid dies. He cannot form right now. He does have a Radiance on his bear, but he's... Like, he's not completely in invincible, right? He has to actually... 
you know, keep his head cool and not overextend. There's your Scotty for the Slark. Indeed, as his second item after Shadowblade gets it. Hookshot gets himself another Shadow Shaman. We've seen this scenario before. This time, though, more fight coming out, and it looks like Shaklo is going to be the one to eat a bullet here. Or not, because Yoki comes in and helps out, killing off all the wards. Free gold for him. As the Venomancer got too close as well. Got killed off, but at least they get Clockwork in return. Tame while still able to jump to the high ground. Had enough mana for that and will live to tell the tale as Jokey. He's gonna be okay as well. Again invisible. Tame while teleports out. It's two for one. I mean, that, that Clockwork keeps going in for that Shadow Shaman. Keeps getting the kill as well though. And the fights that they take of it Radiant sometimes do work out. Under attack. Sometimes do indeed work out. We've got 10k gold in favor of Relax. Experience graph, of course, same story. I mean, 4 of C, Radiant you see that big big drop there. That's when they took the fight. That's when they got the Radiance as well. As Dread comes in with the Sandstorm, realizing I might be in a bit too deep. Sedge Ward gets put down as well. Dread has got another burst strike in just a couple of seconds as Dance and Trends already went for the Frostbite. There comes your Tangle. Dread gets hexed up as well. Has to be careful, but Slumbum, the one that went for him, is already dead. Yoki makes sure that that happens. Team of Wild, the longest zip goes for Krilly. What's with that zip? He is able to get the kill completely worth it, completely out of mana, but completely worth it as well, as he might actually be able to get himself out of there as well, but there is uh, gonna be a Templar Assassin and a Timur Salt chasing him down, as Yoki in the meantime just picks up those supports. Tamer Wild, can he get away? No. He cannot get away. <laughs> Very straightforward answer. But killing off the Lone Druid, worth it? Yes. For sure. Worth it for sure. Especially if Clockwork comes in again and Templar Assassin he is, for the moment, sitting there invisible, but the AoE damage coming out, the refreshing comes in! Maybe they can turn this around! Crystal Maiden gets dropped, and Yoki invisible once again, inside a Shadow Dance. The Shakram comes out, it's not enough just yet, though. And uh, that will be Yoki safe. No tree around here means that there's no way that there can be extra... Extra life coming. He jumps and he jumps towards the tree line. They gonna they're gonna see him again shortly. There they are. They find him. Can they hold him in place? Is there gonna be a hex? Yes, there is. He power dark packs it off already though. And the poison over coming out still. And he's inside the shadow and he's gonna be able to take down the Timbersaw. But Timbersaw suicides. Who the dark pact almost killed off that shadow shaman already? Can they find him? There's no detection. Or oh, there is detection, but there's no deceit.